macOS Big Sur is the next big leap in the evolution of the Mac operating system. In each jump, we experience new ways to get things done, welcome visual changes to keep the system current, and features that bring harmony to the iOS, iPadOS, and macOS ecosystems. Big Sur is no different. So macOS Big Sur is finally here. It's a day we've all been waiting for for quite a while now. I'm going to be taking you through the top things to check out when you download it. Let's get into it. Okay, so some of you might be expecting some crazy UX changes with macOS Big Sur as Apple markets it as just this massive, massive update, but it's actually going to feel more familiar than you would expect. Sure, you're going to see some slight visual tweaks, but they really are just tweaks. Most things are going to stay in the exact same place that they were before with just a more refined, more polished look. And that all starts with the dock. So Apple claims to have totally redesigned the dock from the ground up. And looking at it at first, I didn't actually notice what the difference was. And that might be actually for the better. You see, what they've done is they've changed it to be just this floating design, so it's no longer attached to the bottom of your screen. It's lifted up a little to look a lot more like the iPad OS dock that you're used to. So maybe the reason I didn't notice the change is because they're really just bringing the look over from devices you're already using. Now, the one thing that you will notice in the dock right away when you first boot up macOS Big Sur is the redesigned icons. So taking a look at the history of macOS, you can see that the icons used to be much more literal, resembling real objects that were pertaining to that app itself. Then they moved to a more flat design, trying to modernize the look and brighten it with a bunch of different colors. Now we're taking a step that kind of merges the two together. Yes, you're gonna have that familiar, colorful look, but you're gonna get a lot of shadows and a lot more depth to make the actual icons pop a little more than they did. So it's kind of this hybrid between 3D and 2D design. And while I was hesitant at first, a lot of design experts are actually saying this is a great move for Apple moving into the future to modernize the look of macOS. Let me know in the comments though what you guys think on first glance. Do you enjoy the look of these new icons or do you think that they're not quite there yet? And now continuing with these design changes, they also extend up to the top of your screen to the menu bar. So now you're gonna notice that it's a little more transparent. It's gonna play off of the background that you're using and just reflect those colors. I think it actually blends in a lot more with the desktop now versus it really standing out as this static bar at the top of your screen before. But they've also made some other welcome enhancements to the menu system. So if you click on the Apple logo or anything in the top of your menu bar, you're now gonna see this drop down that is detached from the menu bar, so it's brought down a little bit, but it's also spread out to give a little more breathing room between everything. It's such a subtle change, but I've found that it's probably my favorite one overall because it makes the whole system just feel a little easier to use than it did when everything was just crammed so tight together. Now, some people are also saying that this is gonna be a step toward bringing touchscreen to the Mac. I mean, fingers crossed for that. I imagine that's not coming anytime soon though. Now, further down in the menu bar, you're also gonna see a brand new control center. Much like on iPhone or iPad, you're now gonna have all of these quick accessibility features to turn on and off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, volume, and a bunch of others, instead of crowding them on your menu bar, they're all now tucked away in one neat section of Control Center. As soon as they introduced this, I think a lot of people just thought that it made sense for them to do it this way, and kind of makes you question why they didn't do it sooner. But again, a lot of the point of this update is to bring that harmony between iPad, iPhone, and the macOS ecosystems as they do take that step closer to one unified system. Now, speaking of Notification Center, it's still there, still tucked away, still forgotten by most users. It's gonna function much like it did before if you were ever using it, but now with the addition of widgets. So if you have an app on macOS Big Sur that supports widgets, you're now gonna be able to find them tucked away in your Notification Center, and with one click, you're gonna get access to seeing a bunch of new information at a glance. Now, the problem that I have with Notification Center is that it is tucked away and it does require the one click to view everything. I figure if you're gonna use one click anyway, why wouldn't you click on the app itself to view much more data at a glance versus going over to Notification Center and just seeing a limited amount of information? It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Why it works so well on iPhone is because you're implementing them right on the home screen. So just by opening your phone, you get to see your information right there. So I can't help but think that if they migrated the widgets directly onto your desktop, a lot more people would use them and a lot more people would remember that they actually exist. Of course, let me know if I'm alone in that thought. Do you guys think 
that it would be worth bringing widgets to the desktop or do you prefer them tucked away in Notification Center? Another feature that Apple has updated is the layout of their core apps. In their words, they've streamlined their apps with full height sidebars, refreshed toolbars, and a promised cleaner design. Really, it's just one clear layout that's pulled across all of their apps. If you're a user of Apple's stock apps, then yeah, you're definitely gonna notice a more consistent design and layout across all of these apps. If you're not, then you may not notice much difference when opening apps like Photos, Mail, Messages, Apple Music, or Notes. Now, Safari, on the other hand, does have quite a few new updates in store. And that all begins with a brand new start page where you're able to customize and turn on and off features like iCloud tabs or history or favorites. You're even gonna be able to change the background to make it look exactly how you want it. There's also gonna be some welcome features like previewing a tab just when you hover over it or things like right-clicking and selecting close all tabs to the right. They also claim to have significantly boosted stats like performance. They've also taken a huge dive into privacy and protecting their users, also boasting that they've improved battery life as well. Now, Safari is also available retroactively to older Macs. You don't necessarily need Big Sur in order to get it, but if you do download Big Sur, then you're gonna notice this change immediately. So overall, I think that these updates modernize the Mac OS system. So will you find these updates groundbreaking or revolutionary? No, at least not on the surface. Will they change your workflow or make you do things differently than before? Not necessarily. But you can still say that these updates brought to Mac with Big Sur are welcome enhancements and I mean, they look great. But what do you think? After installing Big Sur, do you find these changes welcome? Is there something that we've spoke about today that you are most excited about? Let me know all of that below. As well, remember to hit that subscribe button to see more from me. As well, hit that like button because it tells YouTube that this video doesn't suck. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.